This video is about the application of Hess's law using average bond enthalpy data. Let's first remind ourselves what these two terms mean. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the pathway taken. So, if I can find an alternative pathway for a chemical reaction to occur, I can add together the enthalpy changes in that pathway, and they will total to give exactly the same value as the direct enthalpy change of that chemical reaction. In this video, we're going to consider how to do that using average bond enthalpy data. So let's write a definition for average bond enthalpy. So, average bond enthalpy is the average energy required to break one mole of a bond in a gaseous state in a number of similar compounds. The key parts of this definition are firstly that it's an average, secondly that we're breaking one mole of that specific bond, thirdly that it's in the gaseous state, so we have a fair comparison. And finally, well, it's an average of that bond in a number of similar compounds. Because it is an average value, it's not always going to be 100% accurate when we apply it to a specific chemical reaction. Because in our specific chemical reaction, we're looking at that bond in one single substance and not a number of similar compounds that's used to calculate this data. And this is a common one mark question that you'll see in IB exams. Let's now consider how we use average bond enthalpy data to calculate the enthalpy change in a chemical reaction. In this generic example, we're reacting a molecule containing two atoms of A with a molecule containing two atoms of B to form two molecules containing an atom of A and an atom of B. And you'll notice that I've drawn the bonds in these molecules, and that's going to be a really important step that allows you to identify which specific average bond enthalpy data you'll need to use in the question. In this question, we're going to be calculating the enthalpy change of that reaction. And when I'm given average bond enthalpy data, the alternative pathway we're going to take is via the gaseous atoms formed when I break the bonds in all of my reactants and all of my products. So how can I represent my average bond enthalpy data using arrows. Well, I know the average bond enthalpy is the energy required to break bonds, so my arrows are going to both be pointing from reactants to gaseous atoms and from products to gaseous atoms. To find the total average bond enthalpy required to break all of my reactants apart, I will need to add the value for an A to A single bond and the value for a B to B single bond. And to find the total average bond enthalpy of my products, I would need to find the value for an A to B single bond and multiply it by two because I'm forming two of those molecules in my products. Once I have the total average bond enthalpy for my reactants and products, I can now calculate enthalpy change of that main reaction by considering the pathway I take to get from my reactants to the products. The first step will be going from my reactants down to the gaseous atoms. And to do this, I'm going in the same direction as my bond enthalpy data arrow. And once I've done that, I'm then going to need to go up in the opposite direction of my average bond enthalpy of the products, meaning that I need to change the sign on that total value. Therefore, in my general formula, 
I'm going to subtract the average bond enthalpy of my product. So to calculate the enthalpy change of my initial reaction, I will always be taking the average bond enthalpy of my reactants in total and subtracting the average bond enthalpy of my products in total. Let's now consider the key points from this video. Firstly, Hess's law allows me to take an alternative pathway to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction. In this case, we find an alternative pathway by calculating the total average bond enthalpy of my reactants and the total average bond enthalpy of my products. And I can use this general formula to help me. The third and final key point here is that using average bond enthalpy data will not always be 100% accurate because the data themselves are taken from an average across a range of similar compounds, some of which will be different to the ones that are involved in your reaction. Hopefully this video was of some help.